Hello everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone and I'm gonna show you how a ball, a notebook, and a tripod can make you a better dog trainer. But before we get started, please hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and give us a thumbs up if you're excited to learn how to become a better dog trainer. We're gonna get started. First of all, the most important thing that we talk about on a regular basis is timing. Now, you've seen in our other videos, we utilize clickers, right? That marks a behavior, but I see all the time that folks timing with the clicker specifically is off. Now, this is where the ball comes in. We're gonna show you a little drill that you can do, but I wanna just give the, the brief second to the clicker and talk about what it is and what it does. We're utilizing this to mark behaviors. That click noise, we have to build a positive association in the beginning, and then once the association is built with the noise, it buys us some time. You can mark the behavior when it happens, and then say a few seconds afterward, provide a reward. But the dog already knows I did it right. Now, some people like to utilize yes or good or another verbal marker. Um, what I found with this is that it carries no baggage and it's easily transferable from one person to the next. So if you have a family full of people training, everybody saying yes sounds a little different. And in the beginning, this is gonna help you to get on the right track faster. Now, the timing aspect of it. When we work with a dog, we want to be marking the second that that behavior happens. And I see a lot of times that people are like, the dog sits and then the click comes afterward, which isn't the end of the world, but it has the potential to cause confusion as you move through training. So this is the ball drill. This is a simple one. You're not gonna have to do it a lot, but doing it two or three times is going to build confidence in your timing and your ability to know how to utilize the two with proper timing skills, okay? So all we're going to be doing is dropping the ball. This is a racquetball. We don't use these in dog training, but you're going to utilize something similar to this in your drill. The ball drops, right? Everybody can see when it hits the wood. You can hear that little thud. Now the drill here for you to work on is to try and mark when the ball hits the ground, okay? This is the few first few times you're gonna do it. It's gonna be like, Oh, that was off. Oh, I jumped early that time. And then you can get to where you can pretty much mark when the ball is actually hitting the ground. And that's just gonna help you to familiarize yourself with the clicker and build a better understanding of timing. The better your timing is, the more consistent you can get the, the point across to the dog. And that is going to help your training to move on in the right direction. The next thing is, this notebook, okay? So if you look into dog training or animal training in general, a lot of folks are going to recommend that you utilize journaling. And there's a couple things that are going to be important to this. When you are keeping these notes, it's gonna help you to recognize, that's what the notebook is for, journaling. You're going to recognize um, some patterns that are happening. Maybe you, you write down some brief things that are happening, right? So today's session we worked on teaching this. Um, Sparky struggled today, but overall, uh, you know, he didn't sleep well last night. You can include some of those things while they're fresh in your mind. And then if you're struggling, you're able to keep an eye on where you're at. The next side of it is you're teaching a lot of different things. And if you can keep some accurate notes of what happened, it's going to help you to know where you left off, especially when you're working with a young, versatile dog. You're moving from some field work to some obedience work, to some retrieving work, and you're jumping around to all of these different things, they're not all happening in order or the same day or the same week even sometimes. So having a good journal with notes kept written down here is gonna be an important way to help you to keep track, have a good direction in where you want to go with your session and better prepare you for what your dog is ready for and why they're struggling or why they're excelling and how to continue down that path. That is number two. And the third thing, okay, this is a tripod. A lot of folks say, because I make this recommendation all the time, to video your training sessions, right? With the tripod, this allows you to set it up, 
point it over an area, and then watch the session as it happens. Now, why is this going to make you a better job trainer? You may be thinking this right now. There are two main things, okay? First of all, everybody that's watching this video right now is probably used to watching dog training videos. You watch some of ours, maybe find some others on YouTube, and as you are watching the videos, you see, wow, he did that right there, and that timing looked good, and that made the dog, or that helped the dog to be successful. And I can see those things visually happening, and I know what it looks like for things to go right. When you are actively working with the dog, it's not as easy to tell what mistakes you may be making, even if they're really subtle, something as simple as the timing that we discussed in the beginning, your click was off or something like that. If you were able to watch that video session back and go, ah, ha ha, my timing was off. I can see that now because it doesn't look like what I watched on those videos that Ethan and Kat put out, okay? Couple tips with this. You can use any tripod, literally any tripod. If you have one at home, just buy a cell phone adapter. If not, they sell cell phone adapter kits that come with a remote shutter so you can start and stop the video with a button that you put in your pocket to make all of this easier. If you have somebody to help you, that's fantastic, but most of us don't have that luxury to have somebody there to help video session. When you set up your phone in the tripod, you want to tighten it down so that you don't, um, so that it doesn't fall out. And this one's set for a bigger phone, but then turn it sideways, okay? That sideways view or horizontal view is gonna give you a bigger picture of what's happening. Now, I said there were two parts to this, right? The number two part is going to be actually utilizing the online dog training community that we have set up via Patreon. It's a subscription service. Yes, it does cost money, but it's a pretty small amount of money in our opinion for what you're getting, which is experience from Kat and I, being able to actually watch your training sessions either as they're happening or what you videoed and sent to us. This allows us to give you critiques on what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, and how to proceed from there. So combining you being able to watch your sessions, it's gonna make you a better dog trainer, as well as sending them to us from a prof for a professional review there on patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. It's going to help you to continue to excel with your dog. The three things that we talked about here are the ball, to help make sure that your timing is consistent, your journal, and then last, the tripod, to be able to actually video your training sessions. If you combine these three things into your training program, you are going to become a better dog trainer. I'm the guy with the pink gun. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.